Do's and don'ts for your mining employment pitch to employers. Welcome to Conversations About Mining. And today I've got Jess here from Beyond Recruitment and Resumes, and we are going to talk about the do's and don'ts when you're doing your mining pitch to the employers. Hi, Jess. How are you? Yeah, I'm great, Andrew. How are you going? Yeah, really good. Um, just um, a bit frustrated. Yeah, and this is the reason I'm doing this question, because this question annoys me a little bit with people with their pitches, because I get a lot of people start their pitch with, I've got all my tickets, I'm ready, I've got all this experience in civil and construction and all that sort of stuff, why can't I get a mining job, or I'm ready to get a mining job. And whenever someone leads off with, I've got all my tickets, you know, red flags go off in my head everywhere because in the production mining side of things, in the hard rock side of things, none of the employers can use those tickets, unfortunately. They all have to issue their own on-site equipment tickets and on-site procedures. So when your, you know, 30-second pitch to the employers contains that, all you're doing is screaming to a lot of them that you don't know how your mine works, or you don't know how their mine works. And um, yeah, so that can be a huge red flag for them. So we try and encourage people to talk about the actual um, experience that they've had on equipment and also the knowledge that they've gained from the training that we do so they can actually talk about what expectations are going to be um, expected of them on site. So you can sort of talk about um, the way instead of going, I've got all my tickets. Well, I understand how your mind works. I know that you go through a lot of people. I understand that you turn over more than 50% of your green new starters. That's why I've done the training. So, I, so that's not going to happen to me. You know, that's always a good one. A lot of people have gotten jobs using that line. You know, I know that you've got a problem. I've sorted myself out that way. I'm not going to have a problem. And that goes over well with a lot of foremans. Have you experienced anything like that over the years? I do. I have a lot of people uh, come to us for in a resume capacity and on the recruitment side of things, and it's exactly that. I've gone out and I've spent $10,000 on all these tickets, and I'm ready to go. I'm ready to fly out. I need to pay these tickets off, and, you know, yeah. I, I can't get a job. I've been applying for months. Uh, and, yeah, it really does come down to, yeah, you do have all those tickets, but your last four or five jobs – you've worked in marketing or advertising or something completely random in an office job. Uh, and it's not, there's none of that transferable. There's none of those transferable skills there. And while you may be keen and you may be an amazing operator, you may have done those tickets and be really passionate about operating heavy machinery. Maybe it's a goal you've had for a long time, um, but you really need to educate yourself because um, a, if you have a good resume and you can get through those ATS systems and get through to an interview, you need to be able to talk the talk. You 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 can you can be the best saleswoman or man in the world, and if you get in front of someone like Andrew that knows everything that they could ever know about how the mind works, and you can't talk the talk, they're going to see right through you. So having the tickets is not going to help you at all. And well, I think like Andrew said, if you're going into a construction FIFO job that's for a civil company or a contracting company have at it. Those tickets are awesome. You'll probably walk into a job, but if you're going for production mining, it's going to be a little bit more of a tr tricky job for you to do that. So yep. you definitely educate yourself. You definitely be able need to understand how a mine works and understand all of that safety terminology and all of those things that you wouldn't have learned doing your tickets. So I think as a combo all together, they can be great if you want to go for a civil job or if you maybe want to have That's that down. little bit of and have a turn on a machine and see if what, what you like or what you want to do. Um, but, yeah, uh, on its own, standalone, um, yeah, it's not going to get you in. <laughs> yeah, you've you got to know how the system works. If you're going to do the pitch for your employment, especially if you're going to travel halfway across the country to Perth or Kalgoorlie, you really mm -hmm. got to understand how the system works. And I've, like I was saying to Jess off camera, I've lost count the number of rooms I've been in with foremans where if the resume starts that I've got a bunch of R2 tickets and they list off 10 tickets in a row, the, the foreman doesn't get past that. It just gets thrown straight in the bin because all you're doing is screaming at them that you don't know how their mind works mm -hmm. because they can't use those tickets. They have to issue all their own on-site equipment tickets. No, and that's what another reason why I say to people if they have the experience operating, if they're experienced operators, maybe they've worked in forestry or civil or whatever area they've worked in construction and they have operated that machinery, um, it's definitely lead with that. Definitely list the makes and models that you have worked on. Definitely roll with that and the safety procedures and the pre-start checks. 
you don't you don't need the tickets. They want to see the experience. Um, what what yeah. you were doing with the machine, how long you were doing it for, yep. what the machine was. Yeah, that's what they want to know. They don't want to see the ticket. They want to know what you were actually doing with it, how long you were doing it for, all that sort of stuff. That's all the relevant information. Yeah, and if you don't have that and you can go into that interview and say, look, I understand. I've only ever operated these machines when I've been doing my license. But when I was sitting my tickets, I operated this, 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 and this. And I did the pre-start checks on it. And I, you know, I know the safety and I know how to do the walk around of the machine. And I know how this works. And I know that you can't walk in front of it here. And I know how this works. And I know how that works within the production mine. They're going to be like, well, you've done your homework. You, you know, you have, yeah, like Andrew says, have moved your training forward probably two or three months and they will definitely, that will pique their interest and they'll remember you. And it may not be for that job that you're there for right now, but when you apply again or something else comes up, you will be, you know, it's, yeah, it's a great, it's a great, great skill to have to educate yourself on this because you need to be able to sit in front of them and know and be confident in what you're talking about, not just rattle through things off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, if you're going in green, it takes two to three months to, you know, sort of follow the morning meeting. And if you do the training that we've got with our three-step plan, um, you'll be following the morning meeting from day one. That's how far advanced it puts you. And it just means that the foreman can look at you and go, holy shit, all I have to do is onboard this person like normal, which I have to do for everybody, and then yeah. just teach them how to drive the truck, which I have to do for everybody. But because they know what's going on, you know, not too long after that, I'm going to be able to leave them alone and they're going to be a productive member of the crew. So I get somebody up to speed in three or four weeks instead of the two or three months. And that's how you make yourself valuable to the people in the mining industry is, yeah. you, you know, you, you're making yourself an easy win or low-hanging fruit, as I like to call it. Yeah, definitely. And if you're coming up, say, against, say, if you're applying for a similar role to someone that is actually an experienced operator, if you can talk the talk and you are, you know, you're keen and you show how keen you are and you've done this course and, you, you know, you're ready to go, a lot of the times they will choose someone that's an experienced, over an experienced operator from, say, civil or some other area because you're not set in your ways. You're, you're fresh. You're going to learn everything. You're not going to bring the bad habits in. Yep, exactly. So yep. don't don't let this put you off if you have gone out and bought got you know got all of those tickets and you're really trying to get in please reach out Andrew or I are happy to have a chat and help you figure out a pathway in yep. um even if yeah we can we can help you figure it out um so if you have any questions in regards to this please reach out to either of us um we'd be happy to help i i, I get a lot of people get in contact with me that you know sort of lead off with i just saw your video i wish i saw your video two weeks ago <laughs> you know sort of thing so yeah and i have a lot of people come through that are like oh man i wish i had of you know just spent money on a resume package rather than going off and doing a, a lot of tickets that now i'm not going to use especially if they're just trying to get an entry-level role yep. so yeah, please reach out um yeah we, we yeah. can definitely figure out a way in whether you have tickets or whether you don't have tickets <laughs> yeah yeah no it's, it's just all about education and the right education that you're chasing for the job that you want so yeah so if you could share this video around and like and subscribe the channel that would be wonderful thanks thanks guys